Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be discussing how to process the Cygnus loop. Uh, of course, I'm not exactly sure if that is how you pronounce it, um, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if you can. I would like to get that right. Now, before we actually get started in this tutorial, I'd like to give you guys the parameters I used for taking this image with the Dwarf 2 telescope. Uh, the first thing that I did with my Dwarf 2 in order to be able to fit everything in the frame correctly I polar aligned my Dwarf 2 telescope and then I proceeded to type in the coordinates that I'm going to show you right now. And after I typed in those coordinates, I did a go to. I set my exposure time to 15 seconds, set my gain to 80, and set the IR cut to pass so that I would not uh, cut out the infrared light. And I also used the Dwarf Ultra High Contrast filter. So if you guys want to get pretty much the same results, make sure that you use. Uh, everything that I used for my own image. Again, this was actually taken in a Bordel Class 5.5 area. And yeah, I used 850 exposures. So if, again, if you want to get about the same results, make sure that you use the same parameters that I use. So uh, make sure you get your data, transfer it to your computer, and let's get straight into the tutorial on how to process this. Okay, so here we are in Cyril. I've already... Uh, placed my lights files into my lights folder on the Windows Explorer app. Uh, I'm going to basically gonna run, uh, run through two different processes for you and you guys can decide which one looks best to you uh, and which one would look uh, better for your own opinion for your own image. So of course, first things first, you're going to need to set your home directory as your Veil Nebula. So go ahead and open that and press open here. Once that is set, you're going to make sure that your preferences say that just give me one minute till it's load okay make sure your preferences say that your bare information from files header if available is checked so that it can automatically convert to the correct bare or mosaic pattern you can hit apply on that and you're going to make sure your oscp processing without dark bias or flat script is installed if it is not uh, you can go ahead and check out the tutorial that i have on my uh, channel on how to install Serial and how to set that up. I, I explained pretty much everything there. And last but not least, we are going to make sure that you guys have Starnet installed. If you don't have Starnet installed, check out the tutorial on how to install that. Again, it is on my channel. So let's go ahead and run the script and we'll come back to when it is complete. Okay, as you can see, stacking is now complete. That took about four minutes to finish up. And let's see, it's stacked. See if we can see how many photos it was able to stack. Yes, it stacked 850 out of the 850 images. Now, let's just go ahead and open that so you guys can see what that looks like. Just a stacked file. As you see, it looks like this. We can switch it to auto stretch. Unlink it and, oh, there we go. Unlink it. And here is the veil nebula and the other veil nebula. And actually, the triangle is here as well. Now, we're going to go through the first way of doing that. One way that you can actually do that is by taking this going to this website here, the astro.melican.com slash fitscrubber, and you can actually upload it here. Make sure you don't do any, any editing on your image before you do this. Just let it stack and take the result.fit file and stick it in here. So you just go ahead and let it upload, and you can actually either remove the green tint or do the star removal. For this, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I get rid of the green tint because I do not want to remove the stars for this image, at least not right now. So let's just go ahead and let it finish uploading. And once it is done uploading, we are going to go ahead and hit the start button here. Okay, uploading has completed. So we're just going to go ahead and press the start button and let it go through its process. And we'll come back to when the process is complete. Okay, and here is our finished image. So as you can see, it looks just like this. So what we're now going to do so we're going to just go ahead and drag it over here and we're going to save this as a fits file. Let's go ahead and let this download. Okay, the download is now complete. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back to Cyril and we're going to open up that downloaded file. So go ahead and oh, first, I guess we could go ahead and save this. We're going to go to open. We're going to go to downloads and we're going to open up this fits file. When it just like that, as you can see, it has a lot of background noise. So go ahead and go to your background extraction, hit generate on it, kind of lower this down, generate, lower it down some more, generate, a little bit more, generate, and we're going to hit compute background. 
Now that I evened out the entire background here, what we're going to do is we're going to switch it to linear mode. And we're going to do an auto stretch on it. So go ahead and take your image processing, do your generalized hyperbolic stretch, and select this here. We're going to kind of drag it up just a little bit. Not too much. And we're going to hit apply. Next, we're going to go back to here, linear stretch, and bring up the black point. Because we really want to make Nebula pop out without uh, having a super bright background. So go ahead and drag this up. Just do it to whatever satisfies you and hit apply. Next, you can go back and drag it up just a little bit more. Just to bring out a little bit more of the Nebula and the background. We're going to hit apply here. Hit close. We're going to go to image processing. And we are going to do our saturation. We're going to drag up our color saturation here, just like that. And I'll drag up the background factor, hit apply. And we're going to do it again. Image processing, color saturation, drag this up. Of course, we don't want it to get too saturated with color, so make sure you lower it down just a little bit and drag this up again. Hit apply. We're now going to go to our histogram transformation, just like this. Kind of drag this over. We really want to bring out that dark background. Just like this. We're going to hit apply and we're going to save it. Now one thing that you can do if you wanted to is you could take this here, go to image processing and run a star net star removal on it just to, just to try it out. So let's go ahead and do that. If we don't like it, then we'll just keep the image as it is. So do a star net star removal and we don't have to do anything. Just go ahead and hit execute. Okay, Starnet is now complete. As you can see, it kind of got rid of a lot of the uh, sharpness of our image. Uh, but it did bring out the nebula very nicely. As you can see, all the nebulosity is right here. We're going to go ahead and do a little bit more processing on this. Zoom this back in. I'd say to 50. Drag this over. We're just going to click here. We're going to select this, just like that. We're going to set that as our symmetry point and start dragging it up. Uh, perhaps we selected the wrong part. Let's reset that. Select the nebula. Select it and start dragging it up. It's a bit too much. This should be, this should be about good, I'd say. We're going to apply that. Now let's go ahead and do our star recomposition. Let's see. Star nut processing, star recomposition. And we're going to go ahead and add these back in. Starless result, open. Star mask result, open. And here's our stars. We can actually uh, make the stars just a little bit smaller by bringing the black point on that. Just like that. Just to really show off the nebula more. However, this star is a little bit bloated, uh, which we did not want. So let's go ahead and bring this down and drag this up some more. Of course, perhaps that is a bit too much because we do still want to see some of the stars. So let's bring this down some. And there we go. Uh, this is the first way that you can actually do this. Um, in regards to the serial processing, you can just do fit scrubber and then take the file into serial. Or you can do it manually. So if you want, you can go ahead and just save it. Just save it as a unique file, just like that. And let's go to the other way that we do this by hitting the open button and going to result.fit and opening it. So basically this way we do it all manually. The fit scrubber basically did the auto stretch everything automatically, uh, but we're going to do it manually here. So auto stretch this image and we're just going to get started working on it. Go ahead and do your background extraction. Generate that and bring up the samples. Generate it again and we're going to drag this up some. Generate some more. Generate and it still didn't get all this area, so do it again and generate. I guess that should be good enough, but we do want to get rid of some of the parts that are on the nebula. So in order to do that, just go ahead and right click on the squares. All right, once you are happy with your selection, go ahead and hit compute background. And as you can see, it evened everything out. So let's hit apply here. We're going to get rid of the green tint here by hitting remove green noise and hit apply. As you can see, it kind of got rid of the coloration. We're going to hit close. Now we're going to switch this to linear mode. We're going to save it 
and we're gonna do a star net star removal on it. So go ahead and do star processing, star net star removal, and we're just gonna go ahead and see uh, what works out best. If we do the star removal first and uh, do the stretch after, or if we do the stretch first and then do a star removal. So let's go ahead and do this. Hit execute after you hit pre-stretch linear image. Okay, it is now complete. So as you see, it is in linear mode. We're gonna go ahead and try to bring this nebula out here. We're gonna go to image processing, generalized hyperbolic stretch, we're going to zoom this into 100. Just like that. Let's go ahead and drag this over some. We're going to go ahead and click on this little symmetry point here. Just like that. We're going to drag this up. Of course, I don't think that was the proper symmetry point, so we're going to reset that. We're going to drag this over just a tiny bit more until that is in the center, and do it again. Click on it and drag it up. Once again, that wasn't enough. So we're gonna actually going to select this part of the nebula right there, and we're going to reset it. Let's go ahead and click this here, and start dragging it up again. Again, that was too much. Let's go ahead and try it here. We're going to hit Apply. We're going to go to our linear stretch and drag, drag up the black point. Just like that. We're going to hit apply again. Now let's bring out the nebula a little bit more. Again, we're going to select our symmetry point. Go ahead and press 1 here. And then click this and start dragging it up some more. Again, that's a bit too noisy. That's a bit overexposed. So let's drag that back down. We're going to hit apply. And we're going to bring up our black point again. As you can see, we didn't lose any of the nebulosity but we got our nice black background. Let's go ahead and move this over and hit apply. We're going to hit close here. Let's go to image processing now and bring, bring some color in here. First, we're going to do our color calibration. Just like this. And we're going to select this background here. Use current selection and do a background neutralization. Now let's zoom in here and select the nebula. And we're going to use the current selection and hit apply here. Just to correct the coloration a bit. Let's go ahead and try to fix our image to get it back into the center. There we go. And now let's do some color saturation. Go ahead and bring this up. As you can see, we have the nice red tones here. We're going to make sure we don't uh, have the background get affected too much. Hit apply. And we're going to do that again. We can actually switch it to red and try to bring this up. Let's see if that makes any kind of a difference. We're going to hit apply. RGB. And yes, it really did bring out the red coloration there. So we're going to go ahead and save that. I'm actually very happy with how this looks right now. Now let's go ahead and try to bring the stars back in. One thing that we could do potentially first and see how it goes is we can do some noise reduction. So go ahead and click that and hit apply. It got rid of a little bit of the background noise. So let's hit close and save this. Now let's go ahead and bring the stars back in here. Go to star processing and do star recomposition. And we're going to go ahead and see which one of this this is. It's a little bit difficult. Start this result. Uh, it's this one here. All right. Hit open. And now we're going to do the star result, star mask result. Yes. Hit open. And let's go ahead and bring these stars back in here. Go ahead and drag up the symmetry point here. Just like this. Looks very nice. We can actually drag it up a little bit more. That's a bit too much. You can actually drag out the black point, see if that fixes it some. Very nice. All right, we're going to hit apply here. Let's see if we can drag out the black point just a tiny bit more. No, it looks a bit unnatural, so we're going to leave it like that. Go ahead and hit close here, and we're going to go ahead and save this as a unique file. Now, let's go ahead and do a comparison and see which two uh, are the best way of doing it, either the manual way or the automatic way. So go ahead and close this, close this, and let's go to our files. Okay, so up first, we actually have our... Uh, automatically done uh, image as you can see it's very blurry when it uses the fit scrubber it comes out a bit blurry um, not the best detail on it but it does have less noise in the background I guess you could say but the coloration does end up just a bit off but it is nice you can see the nebula is very bright very obvious very out there I do appreciate about that um, now let's go ahead and go to the manually done one 
Here is our manual image. As you can see, it has a little bit more background noise. Perhaps if you were to use uh, the darks and bias and flat files with your uh, image, it would come out with less noise. But personally, I'd have to say this is probably my favorite version of it. As you can see, we have more of the red and blue coloration. It looks a lot more natural and it looks a lot less blown out than the automatic version. Let me know in the comments which one you guys think looks best. Uh, hopefully this helped you guys to get it uh, done just a little bit better. Um, hopefully the coordinates helped you guys out to be able to fit both of these in here. And honestly, it took me about half an hour to find out exactly which star in the center will leave us with the perfect coordinates fit to fit all of this in. But uh, I have it here for you guys now. Don't forget to polar align and type in those coordinates and follow the parameters I said at the beginning of the video. But thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this was informative and I hope it helped you guys to uh, process your Veil Nebula image just a little bit better and got to know Cyril a little bit better as well. If you don't have a Dwarf 2 telescope and you are processing this image as well, make sure you check out the Dwarf 2. The Dwarf 2 telescope is an incredible telescope very cheap, uh, very affordable, but it is to able to take some amazing photos and it is very portable. Uh, so make sure that you check it out. Go to dwarflab.com to uh, check that out. And thank you everyone at Dwarf Lab for making this possible. So thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos.